Have you ever had one of those days when nothing seems to go right? From forgetting where you put your keys to catching every red light. A man named Murphy had a law about how things go wrong. Things that rob you of your joy and take away your song. One of those days when your dreams turn to nightmares. Like falling down the long spiral case stairs. One of those days when discouragement is your best friend. Dismay your brother who abides with you until day's end. It's like you made a wrong turn on what's the use road. Traveling the highway is like carrying a heavy load. In your mind, this is some place that you've been before. The scenery is so familiar, like walking on a sandy shore. The only phone number you remember is 1-800-WHO-CARES. But you can't call because you left your phone downstairs. <laughs> you feel frustrated, irritated, aggravated, exasperated, dominated, desecrated, devastated, and decimated. Important matters take second place to insignificant distractions. It's like your time is being filled with worthless transactions. You feel like you want to go back to bed and start all over again because the wheels of your life this day just spin and spin. Like a hamster moving on a slow moving wheel, you're going nowhere with no purpose to fulfill. With feet stuck in the mud with every step you take, oh my goodness, you can't seem to get a break. Lost with no sense of purpose or direction, discouraged, depressed, and overcome with the de dejection. The answers to your problems lie right before you on display. When you reach out to grab them, they seem like miles away. You feel so low, that bottom looks like up. So low you feel like the last drop of water in the cup. So low you are being trampled by a colony of ants, lower than the cuffs on a pair of dress pants. Lower than the temperatures that are sub-zero, lower than a fallen and disgraced superhero, lower than a pothole on an unkept road, lower than the belly of an overweight toad, lower than a pair of socks without elastic, lower than a mat made of synthetic plastic. All the forces of the world are coming against you. How to, over them, you haven't, how to overcome them, you haven't a clue. You say to your soul, flee like a bird to his nest. Take wings like a dove and fly and be at rest. So when nothing seems to be going right and all you can do is moan, press on, don't lose heart. God is still on the throne. Today, we want to talk about discouragement and how that in the midst of discouragement, and maybe you had one of those days, like I explained in the poem. And it seems like, and I like that one uh, section there, where it seems like discouragement is your best friend. And we've all had those days. But it's in those days that God calls us to stay on the wall. Don't be discouraged that God is still on the throne. Father, we come to you uh, today, and we ask, Lord, that uh, you would guide and direct us through this message. Lord, we thank you for the fact that every praise belongs to you, that every praise is to our God. And so, Lord, we ask today that as we uh, even find ourselves maybe at times going through times of discouragement, that that song would come to our heart and that we would remember that every praise is to our God. And so, Lord, as we get into your word today, we invite the congregation to come and dine, the master's calling, come and dine. You can feast at Jesus' table anytime. He who fed the multitudes and turned the water into wine, come and dine, the master's calling, come and dine. Feed us, Lord, at your table, for it's in Christ's name 
we pray. Amen. Amen. The writer of Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 13 says, A merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance, but by sorrow of the heart the spirit is broken. And we begin the message by describing what is discouragement. You know, what is discouragement? And, and Proverbs 15, 13 uh, kind of wraps it up in a nice, neat little package for us because it gives us an accurate description of discouragement. It says, by sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. This means that, that some offense has been committed which causes the heart to become sorrowful and in turn brings about a broken spirit. And this is a loss of enthusiasm, a loss of spirit, a loss of heart, a loss of courage, if you will. That, that something happens that is like a, a balloon that has air in it. And that somebody comes and pops the balloon and lets all the air out. You know, I uh, think of uh, two situations uh, in my life where, where this has happened. Uh, one was when the doctor told me, uh, and, and I, I kind of knew that was coming, but I didn't really want to hear the news uh, that I had diabetes. You know, and it was like when, uh, when I sat there and he said it, you know, you, you know for years, you know, you, you think that, you know, you, your, your health is good, and then, you know, you, you hear uh, something negative about your health. And I remember sitting there, and, and, and after uh, I left, I, I, I text my wife, and I, and I think I put something to the effect that uh, can't believe it, got diabetes, but it's my own fault, you know. And, and it just like seemed like all the air uh, had had gone out of uh, out of my spirit. And, and then the other time was uh, just last year, that when uh, I went through a series of tests, and the doctor told me, uh, you know, it, it seems like you might have had a heart attack or a couple small heart attacks. And man, you know, that, that just does something to you. It, it, just, it just takes, as it says there, your, your enthusiasm, it takes your spirit, it takes your heart, and that sometimes, you know, things that discourage us uh, come into our lives, and it, and it takes that, that heart away. It takes that, that spirit out of our lives. If you go to that next slide. The characteristic of discouragement. Uh, Charles Stanley says this about discouragement. He says that discouragement is universal. Well, when we say it's universal, you know, what does that mean? That means that uh, it happens to everyone, that there's no one that's immune from discouragement, that it, it, it happens to the best of us, you know, from, from young children to uh, elderly uh, individuals that uh, it, 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 runs, it run, uh, runs the gamut, right? That, that discouragement can happen uh, to anyone. Uh, the thing that we uh, see also is that discouragement is reoccurring. You know, wouldn't it be nice if you could just get uh, all the discouragement uh, out of the way at one time, right? Just, <laughs> just, just all the discouragement is gone. And then you don't ever have to worry about it again. But the thing about uh, discouragement is that it's, it's reoccurring. That uh, sometimes when you wake up in the morning, it's staring you right in the face. That it, it, it went to bed with you last night, uh, you tossed and turned all night long, and when you woke up in the morning, it was right there with you. You know, it just you know, comes and comes and comes. Uh, Stanley says that uh, discouragement is contagious. That if you get around discouraged people, guess what? You're going to get it too. You know, there's a, uh, a virus that's going around, you know, coming out of China. And, and so, you know, they, you know, they're keeping people in China. And then there was a group of people for, that were from America, and they flew back to America. Now they got them quarantined in, in some place, and they're not letting them out for two weeks. Why? Because they don't want it spreading to other people. And, and that if we find ourselves, and if our spirit is not strong, and we find ourselves around discouraged people, that we will end up being discouraged ourselves. You know, that's why, you know, we need to be on guard, you know, who we hang out with. And if, if we come into the presence of discouraged people, 
then you know, we ought to have the attitude that, that we're coming to be a source of encouragement, that we're not going to let that rub off on us and bring us down also. So discouragement is contagious. It's, it's unpredicted. Uh, you never know when it's going to strike you. You know, you, you can be going along, it seems like you're having a great day, and then something comes along that, that just for a second, and it just jumps on you, and it just takes all your joy away. It robs your joy. And then, praise God, that uh, Stanley concludes that if you know how to handle uh, discouragement, that discouragement is temporary. It's temporary. You know what somebody said that, uh, my favorite verse is it, uh, it came to pass. And somebody said, well, why is that your favorite verse? Because, praise God, it didn't come to stand. And so, all depending on how you handle discouragement uh, will, will uh, let us know how long it's going to stick around. If you do a poor job handling discouragement, it'll stay around for a long time. I like this. Stanley also says, disappointments are inevitable. Discouragement is a choice. Wow. Wow. If, 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 if I'm discouraged, it's because I choose to be discouragement. Discouraged. You know, you can do something about discouragement. You know, I, I think about how that uh, whenever, you know, you might be in intense fellowship with your spouse. And uh, as you are in intense fellowship, and I know that y'all don't get in intense fellowship with your spouse. Uh, you know what intense fellowship <laughs> Intense fellowship, right? And, uh, and, and, and your, your countenance is, 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 is fired up and... You know, your, your emotion has been jacked up, and then all of a sudden, uh, the phone rings, and you say, hello? <laughs> <laughs> so, so just that quick, you, you have come down off of whatever uh, emotional range that you were on, brought you, pulled it together, and you are able to deal with the situation at hand. So, you know, let, let, let this quote as we think about this message here. Let it burn in your spirit. Let it, let it, let it just carve in your heart. Uh, disappointments are inevitable. They are inevitable. You are going to get disappointed. And, and you know, sometimes you may get disappointed two, three, four, five, six times a day. But discouragement is a choice. You know, it's like I say, you're either in a trial, you just got out of a trial, or you're getting ready to go into a trial. And so we see that there's a word for us in the word of God. And that is that we need to stay on the wall. If you look at your notes, uh, it says the causes of discouragement. So let me introduce this uh, section here uh, by saying, while in captivity, Nehemiah got the word that the wall around the city of Jerusalem was lying in ruins. God called him to lead an effort to go back and rebuild the wall. As we read this endeavor in the book of Nehemiah, we see that it was not an easy task because it was met with much discouragement. Nehemiah faced several ob obstacles that attempted to discourage him. These can also try to dishearten us. And they are, number one, criticism. Criticism. When, when, whenever uh, you are on the wall of what God has called you to do, whether it be ministry, whether it be at work, in the home, if, if God has called you to do a good thing, you can believe it that around the corner somewhere is the cold water committee. And, you know, someone is there ready to squash your dreams, douse your vision, and cause you to quit and get on the side of the road. Now, one of Satan's biggest tools 
You know, I, I heard a guy say one time the devil had a yard sale. And uh, at the devil's yard sale, uh, he had anger, he had bitterness, he had unforgiveness, and he had a bunch of tools on sale. And somebody came and you know, they were looking to, to, to cause somebody to stumble, and, and, and they began to look at the tools that the devil had. And, uh, and these all were at, at a decent price. But the devil had one, and it was the most expensive tool that he had. And the person that came, you know, looking over these tools that they could buy, you know, they, were, you know, they, you know, they had unforgiveness, and so they, you know, they wanted to buy that one. They had anger. They wanted to buy that one. But, uh, and those were all cut rate, right? But there was one that was the highest one in the yard sale. And that is, and that was discouragement. And somebody asked the devil, why does that one cost so much? He said, because that is my most valuable tool. Because you see, a discouraged Christian is a worthless Christian. And so I have a high price and a high premium on this one right here. And so we realize that discouragement comes right from the pit of hell. Now, it, it may be uh, other people that come and other people that bring it, but you can be assured that dis discouragement through criticism is not of God. And so look at Nehemiah chapter 4, verses 1 through 3 criticism as Nehemiah sets out to build a wall. But it came to pass that when Sanballat heard that we were building the wall, huh, he was angry and felt great indignation and mocked the Jews. And so here comes opposition in the form of criticism. And he spoke before his brethren and the army of Samaria and said, what are these feeble Jews doing? Will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they finish the wall in a day? Will they receive the stones out of the heaps of the rubbish, seeing they are burned? Now, Tobiah, the Ammonite, was by him. So wherever there's critics, wherever there's one critic, there's two critics. All right? Uh, and he said... Uh, even that which they build, if a fox <laughs> go up, he shall break down their stone wall. He said that, and a fox, you know, he, he didn't say an elephant. He didn't say a rhinoceros. He said that, that, that your work is so insignificant that if a little tiny fox just touches the wall, it's going to fall down. And you know what? That can be very discouraging. You know, when you, when you think about uh, uh, what we say and, and how we say it to people. You know, I've shared this illustration before. I remember uh, the first church that I was in. Uh, you know, we would uh, have church Sunday school, uh, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. And, uh, you know, there was, uh, you know, every time we had church, you know, we sang songs. That's, that's why I know the old hymn so well, because... Every time we had church, we sang out of the hymn book. And we had a, a plan, uh, piano player, and, uh, and she would play. And I remember on one particular occasion, uh, you know, I came in, and I was just, uh, I don't know, for some reason, I just feel with the spirit. I was excited. And, uh, and I just happened to notice the piano player up there playing. And, uh, and I thought that I was giving her a word of encouragement. And I went up to her, and I said, you know, you really should smile when you play that piano. Whoa, you talking about the, the air out of somebody's balloon, you know? And, and so you see that even sometimes criticism could be that you have the right intention. But, you know, sometimes there's some things that don't need to be said, right? And, and, and so criticism is a cause of discouragement. Uh, we know also that resistance can be a cause of discouragement. Look at chapter 4 and verse 7. Chapter 4 and verse 7. But it came to pass uh, that when Sanballat and Tobiah and the Arabians and the Ammonites and the 
Ashdites heard that the repairing of the walls of Jerusalem went forward and the breaches began to close, they were very angry and conspired all of them together to come and to fight against Jerusalem and to consider it. That when God has called you to do something, keep in mind that at some point there's going to be some resistance. Uh, the fact of the matter is, and I heard somebody say this, and I, I, I hate to say this because I, I, don't, I don't want it to be true of my life, but uh, somebody said that if you're doing something and uh, you're not getting any resistance, then you really need to ask yourself, are you doing the right thing? <laughs> right? Right? Because, you know, again, you know, we, we want, and I'll tell you what, uh, I, I'll just be honest with you. You know, I, I hate conflict. I, I, I really hate conflict. But, when, you know, when you, when you see things, and if, if God has laid something on your heart, uh, something to do, then we might need to come to the realization that if, if we're just tiptoeing through the tulips without any resistance, that we might need to stop somewhere and begin to question, you know, uh, are we doing what God told us to do, and, or are we doing it the way that God told us to do it? Because there's, there's the critics that are out there and that they're not only going to criticize, but they're also going to resist. And then we see uh, what is another cause of discouragement? Just overwhelming problems, right? One problem after another, after another, after another, and, and it just takes the wind out of your sail. Look at Nehemiah chapter 4 and verse 10. Overwhelming problems. And Judah said, the strength of the bearers of burden is decay, and there is much rubbish so that we are not able to build the wall. Now, keep in mind that when the Jews went into captivity, what did Nebuchadnezzar do? He tore down the wall, and it was just a, a, a pile of rubbish. And now Nehemiah's going back, and, and he's looking at it, and it seems like the, the problems are overwhelming. It seems like, man, there's just so much here to do. Now, I'm often reminded, uh, and this happened several times in the 30 years that I've lived in my home, where uh, in my garage, uh, the sewage has backed up. And, you know, if you've ever gone and you've seen sewage that has backed up, and I don't mean just a little puddle, I mean the, the, <laughs> to the place where it's all over, got on things, right? What's the first thing that, that you say? Now, maybe to some of you who are super spiritual, praise God, look at this. Wow, man, this is exciting, right? You know, my first thought is, oh, no. <laughs> Hey man, you're talking about something that's discouraging. You, you're talking about something that will, that will just deflate you in a second. And so sometimes overwhelming problems can be those things that cause discouragement in our life. When we just look at what's around us and we look at it, it just seems like the problems are many and they just keep coming and coming and coming and it just causes us to lose all heart. It, it, it causes us to lose our joy. It causes us to lose our song. Fear, fear. Look at verses 11 and 12. Fear will bring about discouragement. Uh, and our adversary said in verse 11, they shall not know, neither see, till we come among them and slay them and cause the work to see. We're going to kill them. You know, if they don't stop, we, man, we're going to kill them. Now, if that don't put fear into you, I don't know what will. And it came to pass that when the Jews who dwelt uh, by them came, they su uh, said unto us ten times from all the places, where shall you return until they will be upon you? So they threatened them. They threatened to kill them. They used fear to try to overcome. And a lot of times, when we are excited about something, fear will come into our lives. Fear of failure, 
fear of criticism, fear of uh, rejection, fear of not pleasing or living up to, to the standards. And, and, and that will deflate you. That will uh, cause you to be discouraged. It's like Proverbs said. It, it's, it's, it's like the, the brokenness of spirit, you know, just deflates the bones. And then the final thing is, is lack of recognition or appreciation. And, and the reason that I didn't put a scripture behind that because I didn't see one but you know uh, something else I didn't see. You know, I didn't see where Nehemiah was getting any encouragement you know, in this area of rebuilding the wall. It seemed like all he got was criticism, resistance, overwhelming problems, fear, and, and not too many people were coming up to him. Even among his own people, they were fighting, and they were charging exorbitant uh, interest rates. And so Nehemiah is, is, is just uh, getting it from every aspect, from every area. And, 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 and there's just this lack of, a, of appreciation. You know, it's like uh, the lady who picked up the communion cup uh, after communion. And the uh, pastor just happened to notice her picking them up after church. And he said to one of the deacons, he said, uh, Sister so-and-so, she's picking up those communion cups. How long has she been doing that? And the deacon said, oh, pastor, she's been doing that for 20 years. And the pastor thought to himself, you know, 20 years, and, and I've never, you know, went up to her and, and told her that I appreciated her, told her that, you know, that, that that was something that is necessary in the body of Christ. And so he goes up, and he says, Sister, I just want to apologize that in those 20 years that you did that, I never came and, and, and offered a gratitude or appreciation to you. And she said, Pastor, if I was doing it for you, I'd be upset. But I'm not doing it for you. I'm doing it for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And so it's very easy sometimes to, uh, to get discouraged when you don't get appreciated. When nobody, when it seems like you're doing something and nobody's appreciating you. You know, it, it, I mean, it's just, and some of you have been there, right? You, you've been there. Uh, and, 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 and so the only recourse and the only thing that we can come back to is just think about, man, I'm doing it for an audience of one. You know, I, I, I'm not going to uh, pull back on my service because I didn't get appreciated. You know, I, 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 I share the story uh, often about uh, one time when uh, the washing machine went out at our house and I was feeling a little bit uh, unappreciated, right? And I said, man, you know, I, I pay the bills and, you know, I, I keep the, uh, the, the roof over our heads and, you know, put gas in the cars and, and you know, and, uh, you know, as far as my kids were concerned, you know, that, that nobody comes to say, man, Dad, I appreciate it, right? Dad, Dad you know, man, you know, it's, 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 it's so good. You know, it was interesting uh, that the other day, my son uh, Daniel, uh, he texted me and my wife, and, and he just said that, Mom and Dad, I just want to let you know that I appreciate you, and that, uh, you know, you, you guys are great parents and, and grandparents. And, uh, and so I said, well, uh, I guess it, maybe it comes back, you know, uh, a little bit later in life, right, <laughs> right? Uh, because as they were growing up, you know, we weren't getting it. So I, I didn't get the washing machine fixed. And then, you know, all the clothes in the house started getting dirty. And then uh, my clothes started getting dirty. And, uh, and I had to go to the laundromat. And, uh, you know, I was at the laundromat and, uh, you know, washing my clothes. And all of a sudden, uh, I heard a voice out of the dryer. <laughs> and it said, you sure taught them a lesson, didn't you? So, so it's easy, you know, to feel unappreciated, right? And, and that unappreciation, you know, leads us to a point of discouragement. And so when we think about Nehemiah, you know, what were the causes of discouragement? Criticism, resistance, overwhelming problems, fear, lack of recognition, and appreciation. But as we, as we move on, you know, we see that the results of discouragement. There's an emotional letdown, right? Where there once was passion and fire, you know, it goes away. Then what you, then you be, begin to be angry, right? When, when you get discouraged, you get angry. And, uh, sometimes, you know, you look at yourself as the source of the anger, uh, I mean, as the object of the anger. Or then sometimes, you know, you begin to just think around, well, you know, so-and-so, you know, they knew what I was going through, right? 
you know, if, if they wouldn't have did this, then, you know, I wouldn't be in this situation that I'm in right now. And so, you know, what do you start doing? You start getting angry. You get angry with other people. Man, you know, they should have known this. You know, they saw me. They, 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 they knew that I was dealing with this. And, and, and so, you know, there's this getting angry, and then there's this backsliding. You know, and that is when you get discouraged, you know, that you, you step away from God and you step away from service. Uh, there's questioning. You, know, you begin to question uh, yourself. You begin to question others. And more importantly, you begin to question God. You know, God, you, you, you see me. You know what I'm going through. You know, where are you at, God? Where are you at in the midst of all this? And it, and it just seems like God is nowhere around, man. You know, here you are uh, basking in discouragement, and then you wonder where God is, man. You, you're like Job. You put an APB out on God. Where is God that I can go to him? You know, at least let him show up where I can plead my case to him. Right? And there's, and there's this, this discouragement. And, and it's, it's, it's like, I, like I said in the poem that, you know, uh, the only phone number you know is 1-800-WHO-CARES, right? 1-800-WHO-CARES, but you can't even call them because you left your phone downstairs, right? It's, 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 it's pretty bad, you know, uh, depression, uh, mishandling, and this is when you mishandle uh, discouragement, that it can very easily escalate into depression, and then uh, you look for people to blame. You know, you, you look to point the finger, and you see who you can blame. And, and, and so these are some of the results of discouragement. And as I said, one of the most tragic things is that God cannot use a discouraged person. Just think about the times of, of, of discouragement that you might press through but it, it just seems like everything is perfunctory. You may press through, but you're just going through the motions. And if you don't do that, then you just go and quit. You just go and sit down. Yeah, I remember there was an a evangelist, and uh, he had got discouraged because he was preaching, but nobody was coming to the Lord. And so he ran into another guy. And he told the guy, he said, man, you know, this, this ministry stuff is for the birds. He said, I'm, I'm, I'm quitting. And, uh, and, and the guy challenged him. He said, you're telling me that you're quitting. You're coming to me, and you're telling me that you're quitting. You ought to get down on your knees, and you ought to bow your head, and you ought to tell the God in heaven that you're quitting. And it says that the man got down. He tried to do it, but he just couldn't bring those words to tell God that he was quitting. And according to the story, he got up with new vigor and zeal and went and preached. And many souls got saved as a result of that. See, if Satan could have kept him discouraged, just think of all the people who uh, maybe some, God would have used somebody else to bring them to Christ. But he used this individual. And he was in the throes of discouragement. But he was able to come out of it and, and, and go forth and serve the Lord. But, you know, maybe, uh, I guess, you know, maybe some people, was, they have an easy time telling God, I quit, right? I mean, you know, and, and there are times that, you know, so let me say this, because I think we need to be sensitive, because there may be times when God is telling us to quit. But if we're quitting because we're discouraged, and that's the only reason, then it might be kind of hard to tell God that I quit. And we might need to look for that zeal and that excitement to continue on, to serve God. As a matter of fact, uh, we need to use negatives to develop. You know, in these days of smartphones and everything else, you know, where you take your picture and you got it right away, you know, you don't need negatives, right? But there was back in the day, whenever you took a picture, uh, what would you get? You would get a negative and that you would have to take it somewhere and get it developed and that would turn into a nice picture. So when we have negatives in our lives, we need to take them to the Photoshop of God. We need to take them to God's drugstore. And we need to let God use the negatives to develop into something beautiful. Instead of being discouraged, use the negatives to develop. And so 
just want to share this last part. And, you know, we talked about the beginning of the year having uh, an anointing on us. And, uh, you know, the last couple weeks I've been talking about having a Daniel anointing. So today, let me talk about having a Nehemiah anointing. A Nehemiah anointing. And, and, and what is a Nehemiah anointing? It's having an anointing to overcome discouragement. It's an anointing to overcome discouragement. So I'm going to ask that you would look at your notes, the back page, and I'm just going to go through this uh, real quick. And uh, the first thing, uh, notice what it says at the top. And at the very top, it says, Nehemiah dealt with discouragement in a proper manner and that he was able, notice this, he was able to complete building the wall in 52 days. With all that was going on, with all the criticism, with all the, uh, the, the resistance, the overwhelming problems, the fear, the lack of recognition and appreciation, with everything going on, in 52 days, he, he completed the wall. We need to have the spirit of Nehemiah. Oh, that we would have the spirit of Nehemiah. Oh, that we would have the anointing of Nehemiah. The first thing. It says he had a spirit of prayer. What did he say? That if we're going to overcome our disappointment, if we're going to overcome our discouragement, we need to have a spirit of prayer. Hear, O oh our God. And then look what he said. We made our prayer unto our God. And the verses are there if you want to read them. A spirit of prayer. That if you are going to overcome discouragement, man, I, I like... Uh, Sister Evelina, she, uh, one of our members, right? But I remember uh, at prayer meeting on Wednesdays, she would always say, Reverend Glaze, I got down on my rusty knee and prayed, right? And so sometimes you need to get down on your rusty knee and you need to pray. You need to have a spirit of prayer. You know, there's a, uh, James, the brother of Jesus, uh, they called him camel knees. And one of the reasons that they called him camel knees is because he was always on his knees in prayer. And his knees, actually, he, he prayed so much that his knees looked like the knees of a camel. And, and so they called him Old Camel Knees. And so maybe uh, we need to get that nickname, right? That nickname of Old Camel Knees uh, when it comes time, when it comes to dealing with discouragement. Second, a spirit of Nehemiah is a spirit of determination. Wow. Wow. Look what it says here, 4 6. For the people had a mind to work. They were determined. They were determined that nothing was not going to discourage them. Man, it, man it, it, if a fox comes up on the wall, it's going to knock it over. Well, let the fox come. Bring it on, Long John. Bring it on. Right? You know, we, you know, we, we, we're determined. That, 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 that you are not going to break our spirit. You know, we're determined that, that we're not, uh, oh, oh, uh, AJ, real quick. Just, can you go back to that slide that, by Charles Stanley that talks about that uh, we might be disappointed, but uh, we're not going to get discouraged. There you go. Disappointments are inevitable. Some of you may have had three or four disappointments already this morning. They're inevitable, but discouragement is a choice. And when you have a spirit of determination where you are not going to allow whatever it is that's trying to bring you down to get a hold of you, then you're going to be able to overcome that spirit of discouragement. Uh, number three, uh, they had a spirit of awareness. Uh, verse nine, uh, they set a watch, right? They were aware. Now, you know the interesting thing is that, uh, and I, I'm, I'm just going to uh, bring it up to today's terms, right? Uh, they had a revolver in one hand and a prayer book in the other hand, right? A as a matter of fact, not only, uh, uh, go back to the first slide, the, the title slide. Uh, you see that? Look, look what they got in one hand. A sword and a trial, right? So they, what were they doing? They were working and watching. 
in case, it, bring it on. You, you want to discourage us? Like, no, again, no, I'm, I'm not promoting uh, violence. Let me, so let me say that. Let me, let me say that. I'm not promoting violence. But it's uh, very interesting uh, that even later on, it says that Nehemiah punched them in the face and pulled their beard. But uh, that, that's... <laughs> man, man of God. <laughs> man of God. Oh, I see y'all looking at it. Some of y'all looking at it. Man, that, I'm, I'm just quoting the scripture now, right? That's, I, I'm, just, I'm just telling you what the scripture says, right? Uh, so I guess Nehemiah, as godly as he was, he, he must have got in the flesh a little bit, all right? Then he probably went and asked God to forgive him after that. Uh, so, but if you look at it right there, and why did they have the sword in one hand? Because they had to be ready to fight. That if, you know, the enemies were going to come and try to get them down off of the wall, that they were ready to take them on. But they were still working. They were still doing what God told them to do. So, so there, there's a spirit of awareness. There's a spirit of courage. Verse 14, be not afraid. If you're doing what God has called you to do, then you don't need to be afraid of anybody because God is going to help you complete whatever it is that he called you to do. You know, I say all the time, where God guides, he provides, where he leads, he feeds, where he directs, he protects. So if God is leading you to do something, then, then don't be afraid. Don't be scarred. Just step on out there, right? And do what it is that God has called you to do. A spirit of trust. Look what it said. They remembered the Lord. God brought to naught their counsel to naught. Uh, our God shall fight for us. They had a spirit of trust, that they trusted God. And not only that, but they had a spirit of wisdom. Everyone, uh, everyone with one of his hands wrought the work, and the other hand, they held a weapon. So we already talked about that. They, they used wisdom. Uh, a trial in one hand and a sword in the other hand. But then I like this. This, this, this is probably uh, my favorite part right here. And they had a spirit of perseverance. Look, let's look at Nehemiah chapter 6. Nehemiah chapter 6. And would to God that as I close this message today, uh, would to God that this be the attitude of every believer that God has called to do something for him. A spirit of perseverance. Chapter 6 and verse 1. Now it came to pass when Sanballat and Tobiah and Gershom the Arabian and the rest of our enemies heard that I had built the wall and that there was no breach left in it, though at times I had not set up the doors upon the gate. So he had built the wall but had not put the doors in yet. Then Sanballat and Gershom sent unto me, saying, Come, let us meet together in the villages in the plain of oh no right so that would tell me something right there yeah. i'm not meeting anybody in the plain of oh no maybe oh yes but not oh no but they thought to do me mischief that's all that's in the plain of oh no was mischief and i sent messengers unto them saying i am doing a great work so that i cannot come down why should the work cease while I leave it and come down unto you? But look, they didn't stop. They didn't stop. Yet they sent unto me four times. Come down. Come on down. Come on down. Come on down. You would have thought they was in the prices right. Come on down. All right? And I answered them the same way every time. I'm not coming down. The Spirit and the anointing of Nehemiah is a spirit of prayer, determination, awareness, courage, trust, wisdom, and perseverance. Stay on the wall, my friend. Whatever it is that God has called you to do, if you're getting, discour if you're getting discouraged, stay on the wall. Seek the reason for the discouragement. Understand why it is that you are being discouraged. Deal with the reason that you're being discouraged, but stay on the wall. Don't let anybody talk you down off of
for the walk. Father, we uh, come to you today, and Lord, we are so grateful for the example that we have in the book of Nehemiah that lets us know that we can stay on the wall. And so, Father, maybe there's someone here today. They're on the verge of stepping down off the wall. Maybe it's the wall of their family. Maybe it's the wall of their ministry. Maybe it's the wall of their employment, the wall of their walk with God. There are many walls that we can be on. And if it's something that God has called us to, then we know that there are enemies that want to talk us down off the wall. But Lord, let us look at this message. Let us review these notes and even share with other people, Lord. Maybe there's somebody that we know that's getting ready to come down off the wall. Let us share this message with them so that they might be encouraged. Lord, we pray that if there's someone here today that has never received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, or if there's someone here today, Lord, that's looking for a place to fellowship, we ask that you would allow them to come as we give the invitation today. For us in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let us stand. Thank mm -hmm. you.